Stetson, being from Nahana and, you know, kind of Blackshear, all of us, what does it mean for you as growing up as a Georgia fan this game? Yeah, for me, I mean, it was a little bit closer to home down there. You know, it's uh, – I don't know exactly how far we were against, so I only went once. Um, but it, it, it seemed like there were more Florida fans, so it was more, uh, you know, rivalries between households, um, you know, talk smack. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd say I grew up with a little bit more of a – uh, proximity to the game. Sessa, kind of talking about the rivalry now that you've played in it, mm -hmm. what, what does it mean to you, especially going back to two years ago when you got hurt in the game? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I can tell you that it's it's hard to get a feel for how much the, the players uh, care and feel about the rivalry until you play in it. Um, and, you know, you can throw – records or whatever you want to out the window, um, you know, more so than probably any other game on our schedule when we when we go down there and play Florida. I think, you know, Coach Napier is uh, is building a good program. I, I loved him whenever he was at Louisiana. Um, and, you know, they're always going to be a, a force to be reckoned with down there. You obviously study a lot of offense these days. Uh, and obviously tight ends are a big part of your offense. Uh, clearly, they're spe exceptional athletes, uh, pretty much all the guys that you have in that position. But what in particular, it seems like tight end overall has kind of made a comeback in the game. And what in particular makes tight ends a, uh, a good way to go in an offensive strategy? Well, it, well first of all, it hides, um, you know, it, it, it mellows out of defense because it tells them that you could run the ball, and so they're going to blitz a little bit less. Um, you know, they probably got a, a little bit more of a bland game plan and 12 personnel if you if you have two tight ends. Um, and then if they go in their, their, their nickel package, then, you know, you can run the ball on them. you got the weight advantage. Um, and when you've got guys who are, who are as big as these guys are and can move, then what, do you, what are you going to do? Are you going to put a, a smaller guy on them, you know, to, to move with them, or are you going to put a bigger guy who, who may not be able to move with them? And uh, they just create mismatches mismatches and uh you know when you play clean football then it becomes a mismatch game and uh, i think we've got you know some of the best in the country last year in this game nolan has the two turnovers in the game and then afterwards he had a very <coughs> forceful defense of you as the quarterback of this team one do you ever hear what nolan had to say about it and what that might have meant to you and two what does nolan mean to this team especially in a rivalry game this big yeah i think it's um you know, Nolan doesn't hesitate too much. He he says what he thinks, and um, and he's consistent with what he with what he thinks. And so, like, there's never been a question for me um, where he stood. And you know, it it is uh, you know because we struggled a little bit, and you know, defense had our back that game. And then for him to come out and just and just say, hey, you know, all this talk, y'all can you know whatever, it uh, it puts that to bed, and it makes me you know you know, l love the guy and just like, all right, well, that's that's my team. He, he's there. He's, he's for me. He's right or die. You know, that's my guy. And uh, he is he is our vocal leader. Um, you know, he says stuff. People listen. Um, he talks smack in practice, you know, runs around. Um, we try to get back to him whenever we're playing against each other. But it's it's fun, that banter. Uh, I th and I think he, uh, he adds a little uh, levity or I don't know, maybe that's the right word. Uh, to the whole team and makes us laugh and have a good time. On A.D. Mitchell, uh, I guess we'll find out if he can go this week, but not that the offense is cratered without him or anything, but what does he bring? What element does he bring as a guy that you know you can throw deep to, mm -hmm. you can throw back shoulder to? How does he make the offense different? Well, he – I mean, he, he he's one of the best receivers in the country, if not the best. Uh, you know, I've got an immense amount of trust in him. Uh, what he does, what he brings to the table, from a you know a ball skill standpoint, twitch standpoint, uh, strength, physicality, blocking, route running, um, you know I, we've missed him, and uh, you know I'm hoping to get him back and and, and see what we can do with. Seth, it seems like y'all have brought up like the little things and stuff like that when it comes to some of the offensive issues over the bye week. What, how did y'all kind of address those little things and the details and the finer points of the execution that maybe kept y'all from putting as many points on the board? Yeah, 
Yeah, just practice. Uh, just getting after it, going uh, and being critical of ourselves and listening to corrections. Uh, you know, we. Uh, it's always been said that a, a, a player-led team versus a coach-led team is better. And I think that's because you, you, you keep guys accountable. Uh, it's easier to talk to them. It's easier to uh, get things to do things the right way. And I think that's, that's what we've got. Uh, you know, it's not just the coaches telling us that we need to fix things. It's us going in the film room after practice, uh, before practice, looking at the script, knowing what we have to do. And then when we don't do it, then we can go fix it. And I think that's just that's a sign of maturity. Uh, and I think we, we did a good job of it over the bye week. Stetson, last year, uh Kirby had a, a, a halftime speech that a lot of people got to hear. Get the audio got leaked, and we got to hear how fired up. And I guess if anybody's heard Kirby fired up, it's you. We've seen it on mm -hmm. the sideline. What type of motivator is he? And, and tell me about the dynamics of that relationship. Kirby was talking about it a little bit last week, but from your perspective, what is Coach Smart able to do for you with his motivational skills? Uh, relationship? What relationship? I'm sorry. Me and him? Or okay, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I love a little fire. Um, you know, it'll, and he, he doesn't, he doesn't like that. Um, he, uh, he'll get after you, but you know, you, you know, it comes from a, from a standpoint of, uh, wanting the best for the team, you know? So when you, when you put in that, I heard somebody call it a emotional, um, what do they call it? Like an emotional bank, like you, you make deposits and then you can pull it out whenever you, you, you know, get after us a little bit. And, uh, but as far as motivation, I, I, I love him. I think he's one of the best I've ever heard. Uh, you know, he, he gets us fired up um, in, in his own little special way. And, uh, and it, makes, it makes you ready to play football. Stetson, I think you have one, one interception this season. How top of mind is protecting the ball when you're executing the offense uh, in your third year as a starter? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, you, you trust your guys to make plays, but then when, when they're not there, then you throw it away or you, you check it down. Um, it's, it's a mixture of being smarter and also just smarter with the ball, being more careful with the ball, but also just knowing you, knowing your receivers, knowing what throws you can make as well. Um, you know, because if you need a play and you feel like you can make the play, um, then do it, but not if the uh, you know if you're going to put your the offense the team in a dangerous position. Stetson, football has a way of doing this, I guess. But you know, you mentioned Coach Napier earlier in your relationship with him. How strong did that relationship get? You know, it's well documented. You had a chance to play for him whenever you had got the chance to play here uh, with him with Coach O'Hara. Uh, you know, how how well did you get to know those guys, and how hard was it to tell them? You know, I'm not. I'm not going there. I'm coming here. Yeah, no. I mean, it was extremely hard. Uh, you know, I uh, there's a there's a few schools like that. Uh, them and uh, Sanford was actually probably my toughest one. I just love Hatch, and uh, he was my uh, my high school coach's quarterback in college. So I don't know. Just had a good good relationship there. Knew the offense pretty well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a tough phone call. But you know, I'm sure you know he had to make those same phone calls whenever he came to Florida and uh, you know that's just that's this game and you know make your decisions and you know let them know and and, and they say all right and you say all right and then you know smile the next time you see him. Stetson Chris weighed in with his opinion on where he would want to see this game played you being from down there in the area do, does that weigh in on it at all or do, would you like to see it go to a home and home as opposed to staying in Jacksonville? Hmm. You know, the grass is always greener, but um, I don't know. It would be cool to play in, in Gainesville. Uh, you know, I've, it's hard to say. I don't really know exactly what that would mean for Jacksonville, Athens, Gainesville, the city, and all that stuff. But it would be cool to, to play down there. Um, but as far as permanently, I, I, I don't know. Stetson, have you thought about this being your last Florida, Georgia, or Georgia, Florida, however you want to label it. Or Georgia, Florida. I know. You, it's an emotional subject around here, however people label it. Anyways, have you thought about it, any emotions before the game? I'm, I know you'll hold it in during the game, but have you? Uh, no. No. Um, no, I really haven't. I, I probably won't either, but 
maybe. I'm sorry, I don't know, I know. So that's a couple years ago. Can you tell us what happened when you kind of got your shoulder banged up and how are you this season? We've seen you kind of you know, moving your shoulder around a little bit. We know Kirby said that you had a small issue. What is your health now and what happened a couple years ago? Yeah, a couple years ago I got smoked. We um, slid the protection left and they came from the right. And, I mean, dude, that was the play that me and Marcus got hurt. I mean, we were rolling. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was a tough, that was a tough injury or a tough touchdown play what that was um, but as far as this year uh, I got a little banged up against Missouri you know got hit a little bit um, but Auburn a little shaky um, and then going into Vandy felt like I was healing up and feel feel better now um, you know by week by week helped out but uh, yeah I'm gonna try not to do that again this year because that that was probably yeah, I thought I snapped my coll collarbone in half. It hurt so bad. I didn't. But okay, last question. Go ahead, Stetson. You've this is year five for you. You know, Kirby's been here seven years, and you know, going back to your your quarter a few seconds ago about you know you like a little fire. But how have you seen you know Kirby grow as a coach since he started here? You know, sometimes sometimes he on the sideline he'll cuss you he'll cuss you out, drag you, but then he'll you know coach you up on sidelines too. How have you seen him grow as a person and as a coach here? Well, I think it's a uh, – I don't want to say I've seen him grow. He's, you know, a head coach. But it uh, – it, um, it's – I mean, it, it's mainly been, you know, me getting better, me maturing more, and then him, I imagine, trusting me a little bit more in the offense. And then you can have those talks, right? Um, but I think that's where that comes from. Um, I, he's the same guy. Thank you. Thank you.